Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilya Klimov. I'm from GitLab, from a managed import team. I'm a senior front-end engineer, and I love fast things. So I drive a Lotus Alice car. Uh, I'm trying to use my one gigabit uh, speed internet connection where possible. And also I love GitLab for fast build times. And while the first two are obviously out of context of our conference, I will be happy to share my knowledge with the third one. So uh, we uh, in GitLab are trying to support you for entire DevOps cycle, starting from create, where you create your source code, managing issues, planning epics, and so on and so on, and ending with protecting you from, uh, from different malicious activities and monitoring the health of all your production, staging, and so on environments. But obviously speaking about entire DevOps cycle will take forever to complete. So uh, let's focus just on these three things. It's verify, package, and release, which is basically what is continuous integration about. Uh, and continuous delivery will be just right after that, delivering the things to the uh, right after the release somewhere to your actual running environment. So what's the problem here? Uh, it usually starts pretty simple. On the verify stage, somewhere, usually in Node.js environment, since we are in the JavaScript conference, in, and we are speaking about Node.js environment, even if you are a front-end engineer, uh, you usually run some of your favorite tools to check code quality, to run your tests. For example, in GitLab, we utilize uh, YesLint and Jest for linting. We also maintain our own linting rules and for running tests. Long time ago, we've used Karma to do the things, but frankly speaking, I'm very happy that times are gone. Uh, and probably we will introduce some more tooling later. At this step, the main idea is to make sure that everything goes well and that your code behaves as expected. After that, obviously we need to package your code have to deliver to production. And I'm pretty happy that, well, I'm pretty long in uh, software development, more than 10 years. And I remember when you need to invent your own delivery tools for a long, long time. So right now, Docker is a standard way of doing things. And I'm pretty happy to have that. Standardizing things is cool. And we will speak today a lot about making things standard, either entirely for JavaScript community or just for your company, because every company obviously has its own approaches. So uh, the last one is release. And here, the things are not so stable as on package stage. Uh, for this talk, I will focus a bit uh, on the Kubernetes, um, which thing is pretty standard for running Docker containers. I realize uh, probably your pipeline maybe, or your future pipeline may not utilize it. You may probably pick another way of running code or running Docker containers bare on the bare metal, whatever. Uh, but just for now, let's start for this one. And the problem here is that even tools are hard. Building a good uh, tests is very complex things, which probably worth another talk. Uh, making sure that your code runs properly uh, when uh, your development environment and code uh, integra uh, continuous integration environment have different uh, version of Node.js might be tricky and may lead to unpredictable errors. One day I've spent half of a day debugging an unknown crash, literally sick fault, which was a one minor in the third part of the version, difference in the Node.js. I never wish to do that again. Uh, but uh, as you see, as we're adding more and more tools in our pipeline, even just for these three steps, the complexity grows very quickly. But well, it still see things that, hey, let's start with a very simple stay, step. Let's make some verification in our continuous integration pipeline. And here comes troubles. One day, uh, your boss comes and says, hey, your pipeline works pretty slow. And you're welcome to the world of the 
one of the two biggest pro uh, problems of uh, programming. Yeah, now cache invalidation, but now in a DevOps world. So you start learning all these fancy things of how to cache, for example, node modulus between your build steps. So you could avoid running NPM install or YAR install on each step. How to deliver artifacts, things which should be persisted across pipelines. Uh, for example, test results, coverage results. If you do visual integration, testing it may, it may be a screenshot of failed things and registry and registry could be different docker registry maybe for your docker containers if you are releasing something to npm uh, it could be either private npm registry or public npm registry things differ but one day you're starting with the very first thing so you have a tiny fancy step and the boss comes to you and say hey you know, automated testing is not enough. Uh, I know I want to be able to have a quality assurance person to go through the changes of the sub branch and to check that everything goes smooth. Uh, in GitLab, we could call it review applications. So some kind of manual approval. And hello, all this complexity, Docker, Kubernetes, Helm, whatever, is arriving already at the first stage. Uh, and let's see how GitLab could probably help you with it. So let's start with the first step, which is Auto DevOps. Uh, frankly speaking, the powerful, uh, the power of GitLab CI was the main reason why I joined GitLab long, long ago. I was a great fan of it maybe three years before I joined GitLab. And I'm super happy about Auto DevOps feature and even happy that as a front-end engineer, I contributed in it. So let's assume you just go and import uh, some real world uh, repository. I've took the view real world example application uh, just because my uh, main stack is Vue.js and click the default to Auto DevOps pipeline, the settings of new project and the magic happens. You will have this pipeline, which will automatically have steps that build, code quality, yes, lint, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, what's happening? Uh, there is a, uh, probably, if you are long enough into JavaScript development, probably you've deployed your application to Heroku. And you know all that magic. You do just git push, and everything works. Well. We are standing a bit on the shoulder of the giants. Uh, we are utilizing Heroku build pack uh, to make and to understand how we could build your application and to provide you tons of different things. We can automatically test that you are not leaking secrets. Oh, maybe you forgot uh, to remove your Amazon Web Services key from the Git repository. We will let you know. Uh, maybe uh, you are somehow uh, have a bad code smells and quality, or maybe your front end code is not that safe. We have tons of things to produce, which will automatically appear in your pipeline. Just to let you know that what you will have will greatly depend on the tier you have in your GitLab, either standalone or SaaS solution, no matter. The more you pay, obviously, the more things you get. Uh, and for example, as I told, I contributed to auto code quality tool, which will automatically detect the yes lint, uh, which will run uh, several Yeslin specific checks, uh, Yeslin security and Yeslin security related to React. And I've contributed to proper selection of Yeslint version if you are already have Yeslint uh, configuration in your repository. And we will also run, obviously, your checks too. So, uh, but obviously, default is not enough for everyone. Zero configuration is cool. Everyone does it, every build tool, every tool which wants to succeed does it, and Auto DevOps will allow you to quickly have a quick taste of what continuous integration means for you. So the next step is obviously customization. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into that because it will be reading like 10 pages of documentation, but it is extremely simple. As, as long as you know how to configure your application with environment variables, you know how to, to set up 
DevOps. Uh, you could uh, configure every build step and uh, you could disable certain steps in auto DevOps pipeline. Uh, you could either enable or disable review apps if you want to have it built for each, pi uh, for each repository. If you want to have uh, review apps, you will need a Kubernetes cluster integration, by the way. Uh, and uh, this is pretty simple. But one day, that will not be enough and you want to, you want to make your hands dirty and you want to contribute something and which we probably didn't take into account uh, with our auto DevOps pipeline. Remember the GitLab's motto, uh, everyone can contribute and we will be happy if you open the merge request, if you find any issues or potential improvements. Uh, and uh, I don't want to stop here on the learning you, hey, you need the uh, far, you need to learn the new YAML configuration and you can read the docs, they are pretty awesome, trust me. But sometimes every one of us need a source of for inspiration. Uh, I suggest you do the just three things. First of all, take a look uh, with auto DevOps configuration you've started. Uh, it will let you know how we invoke certain things. It's all open source uh, in your project and uh, we let you have a head start if you want just to tune something minor, just copy, paste, tune, and you're awesome. Uh, and probably with two big pro uh, two projects, which are entire in GitLab, which is one is GitLab UI. Uh, GitLab UI is our uh, UI library. And we have a very tiny pipeline there, run just running tests, releasing to NPM uh, and uh, having visual integration, comparing the screenshots. Uh, and always, uh, I'm al always use this, uh, YAML file as a source for my uh, uh, inspiration. Uh, because, for example, have you ever thought that every time is your contributor, internal or external, uh, gives you an update in your YARN log file or in NPM log file, uh, he could probably update this file to point resolution to some malicious code? malicious version or even entire third party code. Do you really want to check this uh, manually with your eyes? Obviously no. Uh, and for example, just a few days ago, when I looked again for in this file preparing for the talk, I discovered untamper my log file project, which is dealing with this, checking with NPM registries and making sure that log file is telling you the truth and was not altered in that specific and probably malicious way. And if you want to go to something really, really insane, just check our main GitLab repository, front-end GitLab CI YAML. We are keeping separate that. Uh, and uh, well, it is really close to insanity. If you don't know, uh, approximately 60% of the time, GitLab CI SaaS runners are building GitLab. So we really, want to talk about speed. Well, if you just think how many money we could save if we could make running our pipelines faster and how happier your developers will be as they will have feedback faster. So let's speak about DAG. Uh, this is uh, our GitLab pipeline. It is not even full. The test stage is way more bigger. And usually it runs one by one. This is a philosophy everyone has. We are splitting our jobs by stages. So first stage running first, waiting for all jobs to complete after that second and so on and so on. Obviously, this is our flow. Prepare, build images, fix source test. Could we theoretically make it run faster? Yes, of course. Let's zoom in. And if we take a look here, uh, obviously our just job which is running tests, need a front-end fixtures job, which is cut here, but trust me, this is the second word, fixtures here. Uh, and this job obviously generating some mock data, which is consumed by our tests. So these two jobs are obviously in place and are kind of hard dependency. They need each other. But let's take a look at these jobs. Yes, Lint and GraphQL Verify. For Yes, Lint, we need just the code. There is no reason to wait for something. Uh, 
So probably maybe we could move it to the earlier stage. Mm, I don't like it. I don't like it because it crushing the entire idea. Obviously, the yes lint is in the test stage and is required to be there. So what to do? And here comes to the rescue our feature, still quite new, not so shiny new, but new, called directed acyclic graph, which allows you, after that, you get your hands dirty in the previous stage and understand that what is the job, what are the job names, just specify, hey, this job, yes, linked as a FOSS, does not need anything. So it could, be, it could be run immediately, as soon as possible. And this job needs uh, our front-end fixture to be completed. So please wait for this and start our job as soon as possible. So a uh, part of our pipeline now looks in this way. And well, it's pretty fun to look and it's pretty fun to understand how fast uh, we could go with this one. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of different dependencies from one to each other. Uh, for example, uh, we could not calculate coverage before all our JEST tests completed, but we want to run it uh, as early as possible. Uh, for example, we want to uh, run tests only after one, we understand which test we want to run. We are paying a lot of not trying to test which for the things which definitely did not change. Uh, and a lot of other approaches. If you still think, hey, you don't need this. It looks like another kill for my small project. Ah, we still utilize it in GitLab UI. Uh, and look, it's pretty sim uh, simple and still shiny. For example, the, uh, the review job, which allows people to check the things on the separate URL and deploy will be run as soon as our storybook will be built. Yeah, probably we can do a better job on the putting words on one line, but hey, we are constantly improving. Uh, same, as soon as Docker image is built, we could run update screenshots, uh, which will automatically update screenshots. This is a manual job. Uh, we could run visual check to check that our screenshots look, looks equal and container scanner to make sure that nothing malicious is running. <laughs> this is still awesome. And uh, this feels like a significant improvement just because it is so easy, at least for me, to understand the approach or the needs. Previously, long, long time ago, when I was working on not on GitLab, I was splitting my things across many, many different stages that just to make sure I could put something to the things uh, which make sense to me look at your code, maybe also have all of these, like have the first pie, uh, like test one, test two, test three, test four stage, get rid of it. With a DAG, you could make your thing smooth and quite discoverable because it's a graph. Every software engineer loves a graph, I believe. So if there is a one thing you probably should give a try in GitLab, this is differently, this is uh, obviously the DAG. Like, 10 of 10 points recommended. So what to do next? Probably you've optimized it and then you're happy with the results. And there are one more thing to do it. One more thing to do is depending on what you want, actually. Probably you could go with full custom pipeline, uh, which is for example, what we currently do in GitLab, uh, because uh, sometimes we want unusual tasks and unusual requirements, and you could want to be a truly DevOps engineer. But there is another option, which I suggest you to consider. If you're running multiple projects in your company, for example, my previous company was outsourcing one, so we've uh, created many quite similar projects. Just discover in our docs way how you could contribute to specific auto DevOps template for your company, assuming you're running a standalone GitLab version. And if you do this, probably you could save enough time for other people in your company. 
So just remember that pipeline improvement is a constant process and not a single time task. Every time, take a look at your pipeline, discover the things which goes slow. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, always feel free to reach me in Twitter, Xanth. Uh, underscore UA and never stop in improving your flows. Thank you.